Rumors of React Court's demise were like, for once, not greatly exaggerated. They were actually like pretty on point. But then, um, nobody likes watching me play tactics games. And then the tactics game that people like watching me play, Blood Bowl 3, is like irredeemably broken for some reason. I don't know how you can just re release a game in that state in 2023, but I've never worked on a software project to that uh, of that scope, or of any scope for that matter. So you know what? We, we need a hit. Let's bring it back. We haven't... The beauty of having not done React Court in like... Um, a month is that I can sort by the, the craziest posts of the last month. A lot of them are not the assholes right off the bat here. But you know what? I, I mean, I can't resist something that has 30, 40,000 upvotes. Hang on. Let me, let me make sure I got my screen region set up here, okay? We are basically binging. This is me getting on an airplane, having not seen a movie in the last 18 months, and then being like, oh my God, they have every movie that people told me to watch over the last 18 months here. So I get to watch both Nope and The Menu. Oh, man. Am I the asshole for calling my mom when my husband refused to listen to me? Now, see, this sounds like a pink song. That's a little callback for you if you were here at the start of the stream. If you're watching on YouTube, you're just going to have to like laugh as if you get the joke. It, it's a sense of solidarity, okay? I can't imagine the answer could be yes here. Oh, my God, they wrote an essay? <laughs> Holy cow. Um, I, 26F, recently moved into my first home. I'm also four months pregnant with our first baby. The pregnancy has been very hard. I have horrible morning sickness. It reached a really bad point where I passed out, hit my head, and my doctor admitted me to the hospital for a week. When I got home, my husband allowed his brother's family to move into two of our three bedrooms. They were evicted. I don't know why. One room was my office. Tossed into our room, papers everywhere, the house was a complete wreck, trash, dirty clothes, used diapers, I started to cry. It was like a light flipped, my husband was no longer the same. My husband told me it wasn't that bad, my reply was fine, you should have the house cleaned up before I wake up. Completely exhausted, I fell asleep for four hours. I woke up and went to get a drink of water, I couldn't. Every glass we own is scattered around the house, they didn't clean a single thing. I passively, aggressively started to pick up the dirty dishes and wash them. The following, okay, this is just... It's just a lot of... I, I'm not saying it's fake. I believe that this situation can come to pass. But it's it, it reminds me of like the start of uh, Joker. Where it's just like literally Joker... The, well, the, the guy who would hitherto for be known as Joker. Like tries to buy a soda from a vending machine. And then the vending machine is like... Da, 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 and then like the power turns off. And then someone comes by and is like, You're ugly! And then, like, another a group of teenagers comes by and they, like, they go, hey, hey, nice shirt. Uh, and they flip up his nose and then they put their foot behind his leg and push him so he falls over. And he falls onto, like, a little, like, some kind of pie or something like that. So when he gets up, he's got apple pie all over his jeans. And he's like, oh, come on, guys. Like, this is, this is what this feels like for this woman right now. It's just, it's too much. That led to a fight where I told him, I'm too sick to have company and they need to leave. To which she replied, there is family, he won't kick them out. I started to cry again. I was beyond frustrated, exhausted. I physically couldn't do it anymore. I called my mom asking if I could come stay with her, telling the whole, her the whole story in front of my husband, who at this point was completely shocked, angry. Also, I could tell he wasn't sure what to do. I'm not, this is just crazy. I can't read this. This is just basically, you, I'm sorry to tell you this, you married the worst person in the world. The whole post should just say, I married the worst person in the world. There's, there's, there's no meat to... I'm, I'm not mad at her if this is real, because she's going through hell right now, but I am a little annoyed because of the fact that it's just, what do you want me to say? You, you wrote an essay about how bad your husband is. I think as soon as you get to that point, you know you're probably not the asshole, and you should get a restraining order. Am I the asshole for yelling at my girlfriend to stop freaking eating? It did seem like an Ari Aster movie. But you know what? Good for her. Because I know how that ends. <laughs> Excuse me? 
My male 26 sister, F23, runs a bakery business, also known as a bakery. She's been struggling lately to keep up with orders because she's been short-staffed. She does a lot of orders for wedding cakes that require custard or marmalade fillings. UK spotted. I offered to help her out by making these fillings at home and bringing them to her so she has less work to do. Unfortunately, the past four times I've made these fillings, my girlfriend has literally dipped her fingers into the filling jars and contaminated them because, in her words, she just wanted to try some. That's disgusting, for sure. I've tried explaining to her that she can't dip her fingers in and contaminate the entire batch because then I have to remake it. I said she should use a spoon and take some out if she wants to try it. She just pouts and says she likes using her fingers because it takes her back to her childhood. This, I also don't believe that this is true, but that's okay. Today I was trying to finish some chocolate custard to send it over to my sister because she was running late on a wedding cake order for an important client. Well, it's, it's nice to know that um, if I was to commission a wedding cake, not all clients are created equal. Like there might be some clients where you would be like, oh, if I don't get their wedding cake done in time, that's no big deal. I've got more important things. It's, it's, I'm sure that, you know, there is a little bit of triage that happens in these kinds of businesses, but at the same time, you're not supposed to let the customer know that there's like some clients that are more important than others. I told my girlfriend, don't eat the custard. And if you really want to use a spoon, I get out of the shower, and what do I see? She has her fingers in it again. I totally lost it. I yelled at her and said, stop freaking eating the food I'm making. She started crying and got mad at me for fat shaming her. This post is not real. So yes, you are the asshole. If this really happened, obviously you're not the asshole. But because it's fake, yes, you, you are the asshole. Let me get, I, I, I like the posts where someone is the asshole. Most people, when they write fake posts, I think they make it, they make the, the fake OP as sympathetic as possible. I much prefer when it's somebody that you could reasonably convince yourself has no self-awareness and is like, am I the idiot? I, I can't not read this one. <clears throat> am I the asshole for demanding my girlfriend tell, tells me her author's pen name. It's the, wrong, it's the wrong screen region again. I, male 32, have been dating Shoban, F32, for six months now. She's always been very vague about what she does for a living. Sati things, like writing and working from... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that that is saying things. Like writing and working from home writing? What is, sa unless Sadi is like, is that an astrology thing? But recently, one of her friends mentioned something and I finally dragged it out of her. She's an author. She write and self-publish. Honestly, she should have proofread your post, just for the record. She write and self-published romance and erotica stories and novels. And while not rich, she's able to make a living out of it. I googled her name and couldn't find anything. So I confronted her about this. She said she's writing under a pen name. So I demanded she gives it to me so I know what she does. She refuses saying she doesn't want it to be leaked even by accident and no one knows. I accused her of not trusting me and she still refused, which is really annoying. I tried a nicer approach and told her I want to know her fantasies. I, I lied to her. I manipulated her and lied to her to try to get the information that she wouldn't give me when I asked honestly. Um, so I can try it out with her. And she told me she, what she writes aren't her fantasies, but her reader's fantasies, and she's still not going to tell me. At night, I tried to check her laptop for her pen name, but she changed her password before bed. I was annoyed and told her she clearly doesn't trust me, and it's not fair because I have a right to know what she writes, especially since it's a sensitive topic, and I don't know her I, if I don't know her pen name. She was furious. I tried to look on her laptop, and she told me to go home. Before leaving, I told her when she calls to apologize, I expect to get her pen name with the apology. She called me an asshole on my way out. I thought she'd call by now, but she hasn't. My sister told me I was the asshole. I should apologize, but I just don't see it and need second opinion. Was I the asshole? Um, you know what I'm realizing is we might have to go with posts that are... Like, I'm, I'm sorry to say this. We are smarter than the average... Redditor who, who upvotes and downvotes. I think it's like if you don't... I'm trying to think about how to phrase this. <laughs> if you don't spend a lot of time in the real world, this might seem like a story that happens. You're like, yeah, for sure. 
this definitely took took place. Um, but if you if you go outside, you're like this. This is not real. This can't conceivably be real. Because if someone was making this post, they would never admit to committing a crime by trying to hack into their their girlfriend's laptop. They would hide it. They would take that information to the grave with them. You'd be surprised. Well, if it's real, obviously he's the asshole. Like, I, you, you can't just hack into someone's, you know, private communications or something like that. I'm 60% on if it's fake. Is that not, is that not like, well known that you're automatically the asshole? Is like, the only time you can hack into somebody's computer or phone and not be the asshole is if you have, like, a, what's, what's the word? If there's casus belly, that's not what I'm, I'm thinking of. If you have reason to believe, probable cause, that they have like committed a crime and you need to get evidence for it in order to be like 100%. If 10 people come to you and are like, your boyfriend murdered someone when he was in high school, then you can go tick, 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 tick. In my opinion, I don't know if it's legal, but you can, as far as I'm concerned, you could do that without being the asshole in order to protect like your, your own physical safety. But to get your, your girlfriend's pen name? Absolutely not. Hang on. Let's, let's find some spicier ones. <laughs> am, I, am I the asshole for screaming at my pregnant fiancé for not helping me find my dog who had run off? That's just tough. Probably, ah, yeah. when you're, I, I'm not, I, listen, I haven't even read the post yet, okay? All I'm going to say is that when, you know, your, your pets, you think your pets are lost, it spikes your adrenaline. I remember, like, I was looking for Ruka in our house for, like, an hour, and you're just, you're not thinking straight. You're like, maybe he got into the dryer and turned it on. You know, maybe he put himself in the dishwasher and turned it on. Hey, Zebra 68 thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. And you're looking in places. You're like, oh, we, 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 maybe, he, maybe he got here. Maybe he got here. And then I was like, you know what? It's like 10 p.m. And I got to go out and, and find my cat in the city, which I'm not giving myself like a very high percentage chance to succeed. But before I, I went out, I was like, I'm so anxious. I actually have to diarrhea in the toilet first. Like I, I had no other option if I went outside, I would have pooped my pants. But like the my my GI tract was all messed up from like the stress and anxiety. I'm like, I, I gotta drop a little dookie bomb in the toilet first. And then I when I got out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna leave. And then I opened up the closet to get my coat, and he was sitting like in the back of the closet behind the stroller. Like, meow. Fucking idiot, dude. Anyway. So all I'm saying is that when your adrenaline is like spiked, you do things that are not, you, that you wouldn't do if you had a sober mindset. And then the people are looking at this on Reddit and they're like, I would never do that. Well, I'm like, I don't know. You might if somebody ate your shredded cheese that you were saving for a snack and then that spiked your acetylcholine or something. My fiance is currently five months pregnant and has been both fatigued and nauseous. I get why she didn't want to help me look for the dog, but I can't get over the lack of empathy and bordering selfish behavior of this either. My dog, six-year-old healer corgi mix, I am not anti-dog, but I will never understand that in almost every dog post, they put the age is not relevant either, but the fact that they put the breed of the dog is so funny to me. As if it's relevant, as if you'd be like, Well, as a corgi, you gotta go out and look for it. I mean, if it was like a German Shepherd, it might be able to sniff its way home, but a corgi, you need it, it needs some help. You need a guardian. Usually, my fiance will help, it runs off at least once a week. Usually my fiance will help me find her, but it's not without protest. I'd be protesting too. That dog is, that is a, almost a, a wild dog at this point. Like it's spending uh, one seventh of its time outside of your house. 
I honestly don't even know how she was getting out of our fenced yard, so I installed cameras and found she was scaling the eight-foot fence. I ended up attaching spinners to the top of the fence, thinking it would solve the issue, but it didn't. I brought her out today and was playing with her when my phone rang. I was inside just long enough to grab my phone and my dog had gotten out. Are you, no disrespect, but are you stupid? Just, I, I mean, like, let it go to voicemail. I do, <laughs> Your dog gets out once a week. You obviously cannot leave it unsupervised for any length of time or it's going to get out. Info needed video of dog scaling fence. I mean, it's like, I am, I'm not a dog person necessarily. I also, I don't even know what a healer is outside of, uh, you know, like a, a Dota archetype. How is a corgi scaling an eight-foot fence, even if it is only half corgi? All I'm suggesting, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, that it can't happen. I'm just saying it's not like he's clearing it in a single leap. Like, you, you probably got like five or ten seconds to, to intervene, right? So he got, he, he's basically, am, am I the asshole for getting outsmarted by my dog that has a brain the size of like two walnuts mashed together? My dog had gotten out. I immediately went in search for her, thinking she couldn't have gotten far, but I couldn't find her anywhere. So I went back to the house, asked my fiance, who was curled up on the sofa, to come help me. She immediately said, no, she's tired of chasing the dog. She isn't dealing with it anymore and that I should have been out there watching her. I explained I had been watching her, except for this one brief period where I did not watch her. She again said it wasn't her problem and she's not exhausting herself anymore to search for my dog. I won't even say it was unexpected because as I said in the past, she always had a problem with helping me search, but she's never said no. She just complained about it. At first, I went and searched myself. After maybe half an hour, I came back and asked her again to come help me and she snapped and said, I said, no, I'm so tired of chasing that dog around multiple times a week when I'm already exhausted and throwing up constantly. I was panicked and unleashed unleashed some yelling, which involved me telling her she was a, what? You can't say that. Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Who lacked empathy and that I was thoroughly disappointed with my decision to be with someone so heartless. It was out of pure fear and panic on my part, and I did apologize later. Well, then why are you making the post? You're basically like, I know I'm the asshole, but like, what, can you tell, can you make me feel better about it? After I found my dog, but she said a GFY and won't talk to me. Am I the asshole? Everyone is on my side except my sister who says I'm a freaking prick because it's not my pregnant fiance's responsibility to chase around your freaking... Okay, oh, people were mean to my dog. Does that change the... Uh, pe people use the pejoratives against my dog. Does that mean that uh, I'm actually in the right now? She said she would have left immediately if her BF ever said what I did to her. Yeah, I mean, this, I, I believe that this could be real. Um, and you're definitely, you're, you're the asshole. Listen, I think it's forgivable to say something you regret in a heated moment. Um, as long as you recognize that you, you did something wrong as soon as possible and try to make up for it. What is unacceptable to me is like you let your dog escape from your house once a week. That's like you, 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 have, you have a problem. The problem has a solution, but you have not made literally the slightest effort to, to make sure it doesn't happen. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I get that like dogs and kids are like two different things. But when you have like an 18 month old kid, you can't be like, oh, I was watching her, but then I just stepped away for 10 minutes. And when I came back, she ate like a bunch of batteries. Well, you got to watch her. Were you, I was watching her, except when I left and then she ate the batteries. Like you got to, if, if your dog is always escaping, you got to, then when you're outside, you got to watch your dog. Or your fence has to be like, I don't know, twice as tall or something like that. Chat just showed up and said seven people here. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's this dude and his six, uh, his six sock puppets. Actually, 
She was really mean to his dog, so I think... I mean, it's just... I, I think it, there's like... Doing something... Saying something you regret in the heat of the moment. That's bad. But you can come back from that as long as you, you know, like get down on your hands and knees and rub your hands together like this. Making a post where you're like, I know that I'm the asshole, but am I the asshole is worse because like now you're like calm and you recognize the problem, but you're still like squirming to try to find a way out. Not making any plan at all to stop your dog from escaping is like the worst. That's just like, I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's like being like, I, please help me stop eating so many snacks. And you're like, okay, tell me about how you grocery shop. And they're like, well, immediately I go straight for the snack aisle. Well, you got to stop going to the snack aisle. Like you gotta, at least you gotta put forth a little bit of effort to, to figure it out. Buy less candles. No? But the spinners, by the way, what is a spinner? I'm, I'm picturing that a spinner is um, like that plastic, uh, like semi-circle that was sometimes on top of chain link fences like at baseball diamonds when I was a kid. They're, they're coyote rollers. What the hell is a coyote roller? <laughs> it's, a, it's a metal bar that rolls. Okay. So when they try to put their weight on it, it spins them back. I understand. Honestly, maybe the dog is trying to escape. Maybe he knows he can't be trusted. At this point, you're the asshole for not training the dog better. Rehome him. He deserves a better owner. Okay, that's like maybe a little too far, but I, I agree with you in the spirit of it. You need to train your dog not to run off. Can you do that? I've only ever had cats. Can you train a dog to not escape? Because for, for cats, it really seems like you just got to watch them. Like every day, Ruka tries to run out of our house when we open the door. So whenever I open the door, I'm always like, I got my eyes peeled to make sure he doesn't bolt. And whenever like, you know, an electrician or something comes over, I'm like, please make sure the door is closed at all times. And they're like, why? And I'm like, we have cats. They're like, say no more. You're the asshole. Sell your cat. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to get one of those like doors that it can open at the top. And then instead of opening it like the full way, I'm just going to open the top half of the door and then like hurdle over it every morning. That'll work. Maybe I'll install like a spinner on top of that. Although they don't seem to work anyway. He is going to escalate behavior when the baby comes. If this is how he acts when his dog gets out, what's he going to do when he only has only slept three hours in four days and things don't go his way? Okay, I listen, you don't know that. We can make an assumption, but like can't admit, like there's one data point and you're extrapolating it like he's a he's a bad father and then everybody rather than like make a reply that's like well we don't know that let's give him a chance everybody's like no you didn't go far enough he's probably going to be abusive what happens when the baby comes and the dog gets out is he going to expect her to just pack up the baby and go in search of the dog you need to it, 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 like it's okay what, what happens in the future when the sun explodes and we're not living in the future he was an idiot like in the past let's deal with things that are actually like written in stone already it's like on reddit the dude made like a mistake and was stupid but everybody's like yeah he's irredeemable forever like no just like eviscerate him a little bit and then maybe he'll change his behavior it's not like these people are perfect like look at their usernames Am I the asshole for refusing to help my neighbor and her two young children when their wipers were frozen? Canada spotted? I, 59 male, live in a major city in Ontario, Canada. I live in a small subdivision and have five neighbors total on my street. Not a major city. Studies with... Sorry, there's no... You, you don't live in a major city 
if you're on a cul-de-sac with five other detached houses. You might be in, you might be in Oshawa, you might be in Burlington, Mississauga, Scarborough, um, Richmond Hill, something like that. I'm telling you, it, it, don't flatter yourself. In, enjoy the fact that you've got a, a house that I'm sure is worth more money than it's actually worth. And you, you get to tell people, you get to steal the valor of being like, yeah, I'm from Toronto. But actually, you're like, I'm 75 minutes on the go train away. I'm just, I, just we're out here in the, in the urban sprawl making it work. I'm keeping non-Tim Hortons coffee shops open so that the two times a year you actually make it into the city and you condescend about, oh, wow, there's so many people and, oh, wow, oh, there's so much traffic, blah, 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 so that you can be like, ooh, but it's so nice to go to J.J. Bean instead of Starbucks for once. I, 59 male, live in a major city in Ontario, Canada. I live in a small subdivision. I have five neighbors total on my street for the past few years in winter. We're getting a lot of snow or bad storms. As I'm leaving for my overnight shift around 8 or 9 p.m., I'll put my wife's windshield wipers up on her car and do a quick walk around to my other five neighbors and put their windshield wipers up on their cars. Obviously not if they're outside or something, but if it looks like they're in for the night. Many of them will forget to do this, as many of them have children, and it typically slips their mind, and their wipers will be frozen to their car in the morning. So this is like a little weird, but it's nice. It is a nice thing to do. I wouldn't be mad as long as he told me that it was him that did it. If I like was at the you know neighborhood town hall meeting with him and he was like, hey, did you like how your windshield wipers were up instead of down? I guess there's some sort of like windshield wiper fairy that's going around doing that. I would be like, that's weird, but... I don't think this is like, he's not offensive right now. It's not like he threw dog poop in, uh, in my garbage can or something like that, which is, we all know, is unforgivable. It's just something nice I like to do to look out for my neighbors. But here's where there's like, um, I, I, I'm, there's got to be a condition, right? It's just something nice I like to do, and like I can leverage it and hold it over their head if something that they do doesn't appeal to me. They're always grateful of this and thank me. Many of them started doing it too. There'll be nights where I'll forget to put mine and my wife's up. And in the morning, one of the neighbors has done it for us. Anyway, recently, one of our neighbors moved in. A new family moved in as of last week. It's a young couple and they're two young children. The other night, I was leaving for my overnight shift at around 9 p.m. It was snowing really heavy and we were supposed to be getting almost 30 centimeters. And it was freezing out. So I put my wife's wipers up and did my usual quick walk around to the other neighbors. I was hesitant when I reached my new neighbor's house as I've only introduced myself once, but did it anyway. As I was putting the second wiper up on their pickup truck. See, this is, I'm getting whiplash. Because at first I was like, he hates this young family. But now that I know the young family has a pickup truck, I'm like, whoa, not the asshole. But what if the husband actually is one of the 1% of pickup owners that has a job where like towing or hauling materials is actually required. In that case, I might say that he is the asshole. I don't know. I, I need more context. Info. What is the husband's job? Hey, what the F are you doing to my truck? I tried to explain to him. I was just putting his wipers up to help him. He continued to scream at me to get the hell off my property and don't touch my S again. The wife then came out and started yelling at me too. I apologized and started walking away. Some of my other neighbors heard the commotion and came outside to see what was happening. They tried explaining to him too that it's just something we do. Both of them wasn't having it. Fast forward to this morning. I'm arriving home from my overnight shift and as I'm walking in, I see the wife of this couple struggling outside to break the ice off the windshield wipers of the truck. Guess she was trying to take her kids to school and both of the wipers was frozen solid on the car. She sees me and yells over, hey there, do you mind giving me a hand, please? I look over to her and yell back, no, sorry, thought I was never to touch your shit ever again, ma'am, and walked back inside. She yelled it back at me, wow, A-H. Told my wife about this. She thinks I should have helped her because she's just trying to get her kids to school. I disagree as I was just following what they told me. A-I-T-A. I believe that here, I believe that this story is real up until new neighbors moved into the subdivision. And I believe that the rest of this happened in this man's head when he was in the shower. He did not put the windshield wipers up on the new neighbor's truck because he imagined that they might 
say, what the F are you doing? And then imagined pathetically, even after that, coming home from work. And of course, the, the young lady who yelled at him is now struggling with their frozen windshield wipers. And then you get a malicious compliance in there where you say, I'm just doing what you told me. Sorry. He probably lives in Windsor and is bored. Classic Windsor L. I would have to give this... Uh, I mean, it, this is like every boomer's power fantasy, right? And maybe it'll be mine when I'm that age, too. But isn't every boomer's power fantasy like you didn't, you didn't appreciate what I did for you and now, you know, fire and brimstone is going to rain down upon you? I held the door open at Walmart for, for a Gen Z kid who was on their phone. They didn't say thank you. And then an anvil fell on their head and smushed them down until they were so flat that they had to plug their nose and put their thumb in their mouth and then go... And then they blew up to the size of a balloon and started floating away. And somebody took a needle and went... Boop, and they went... Boop. Am I the asshole? Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pick out a good one. Am I the asshole for putting blue hair dye in my shampoo without letting my family know? 17,000 upvotes, not the asshole? I like the family ones the most. Am I the asshole for letting my father cause a huge scene at my engagement party and embarrass my future mother-in-law? My father has many faults. I'm well aware of these and therefore tend to keep our interactions private. Reddit. I still love him and I've developed a system to keep him from fucking me over. This is one of the weirdest starts to a post I've ever seen in my entire life. Can we, can we get some more information on what the system is here? The system that you have to deal with your father to keep him from effing you over? When my fiancé asked me to marry him, I said yes. And then I went and privately told my dad about it. We had a nice dinner with my fiancé and that was that. My future mother-in-law wanted to have an engagement party. I was fine with it. I requested that she not invite my father. I explained that we had a strained relationship and I prefer to keep him at a distance. She agreed. I guess she thought she knew better than me. She wanted to fix our relationship in the first... Okay, I think I see where this is going. She wanted to fix our relationship and the first step was inviting him to her home for a party with alcohol. When I met my dad, I specifically chose a restaurant that didn't have a liquor license and we went right after work. His car has a breathalyzer built in to make it start. I know what would happen otherwise. When I saw my dad there, my stomach flipped. I asked her what was going on. She said a good daughter would want her dad to be there on this important day. I asked her to please make him leave. She said I was being rude. I went over to my dad and asked him to leave. He promised to behave. He was so happy to be invited. I told my fiance I might need to leave in a hurry. Okay, my father was fine at the beginning. Then wine came around. He took some, then more, then more. He started getting happy. After dinner, there were drinks. As soon as I heard him raise his voice, I asked my fiancé to leave. I faked a stomach problem and we left. The least embarrassing thing he did was piss himself and puke on the lawn. What the hell else did he do? That's the least embarrassing thing? My future mother-in-law was furious. She said she should have told me I should have told her that my father has a drinking problem. I said it wouldn't have been a problem if she hadn't lied to my face about not inviting him. My father is humiliated that he did this. I am just numb. Okay. I mean, this is just... I mean, it's just sad. Really. <laughs> Everybody sucks here. Not, not so much the, the child, except for maybe making up the post. This post. Am I the asshole for making our daughter clean our horse's stalls against her will? Is it the, 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 you own a polo club or something? Builds character? Your horse's stalls? 
We recently got two horses. My oh, the, now that I know there's two of them, not the asshole. I was picturing like an entire stable or something. Now that I know it's just a modest two horses, then I, I think that builds character. We recently got two horses. My younger daughter wanted them as she's been learning to ride. My older daughter was against them. Okay, follow-up question. In that case, why did you buy two? You have one daughter who wants to ride horses. Why'd you get two horses? Do they keep each other company? I don't know, honestly. I'm not a, I'm not a horse guy. My older daughter was against them. She's much more princessy and didn't want to deal with the mess and chores that come with horses, but we told her it wouldn't be something she'd have to deal with and that her younger sister promised to take care of it all. You got, you're working from behind the eight ball already because she didn't want the horses. Her sister wanted the horses. Two adults made the decision to buy the horses, and yet somehow she ends up cleaning the stables. Make it make sense. How on earth does that happen? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. We wanted her to... Wait, sorry. Recently, the older daughter has been disrespectful at home and staying out too late and her grades have been slipping. We warned her to shape up, but last week when we heard she'd been needlessly insulting to her younger sister while I was running errands, I told her she'd be cleaning out the stable each day for the next week as punishment and that her sister would get a break. She got really upset and offended and said she promised she'd never have... We'd, she pro we promised she'd never have to go in there or have to scoop horse poop. I said, I promised it wouldn't be one of your chores, of course, but obviously a punishment is supposed to be something outside of your normal chores and something you won't like. She's been doing it for three days now and seems to be very resentful of our broken promise, acting very disgusted and keeps begging to get out of the rest of it. But I said, I thought it's very fair and she's overreacting. Am I the asshole? I don't know how it happened, but somehow I'm like, nope, not the asshole. A punishment is supposed to be something that you don't like to do. Admittedly, it sucks that she didn't even want the horses and now she has to clean the, the horse poop and, and clean the stables or whatever. But you should have thought of that before you were being a little you-know-what. A week of doing something that you don't like to do. I go, oh, there's a contract, but I didn't even... It's a... The punishment doesn't make sense. Instead, you should... To do something that would, there was a reasonable expectation, like make me do the dishes twice as often or something. No, I think this is, I think this is completely fine. I, I don't think this makes you, I don't think this makes you an asshole. I'm surprised Reddit didn't side with him. I'm not, because Reddit and the internet in general is like, if you promised you can never break the promise. A promise is like legally binding. The only thing more severely fucked up in Reddit's opinion than breaking a promise is not respecting a contract. If you made a promise to break a legally binding document, the website would explode. They would have to take it offline. Because they'd look at it like the same way a lawyer pours through like the criminal code in order to determine, well, yes, maybe your daughter threw boiling hot water on her sister, but at the same time, you promised she would never have to clean the stables. Well, like, I guess you sh I should have made you promise not to throw boiling hot water on your sister. I, I think that even if he is the asshole here, I think he's the asshole in a, in a very, very small way. And I think the comments are going to blow him out. I think they're going to say things like, how are you supposed to, how is your child supposed to ever trust you ever again when you told her she wouldn't have to clean the stables and then she had to clean the stables for a week as a punishment? I think that they are going to, I think they're going to go off on this, Dad. I think they're going to suggest, I think they're going to say things that are like, um, I hope you enjoy the next six months of her living with you because as soon as she turns 18, don't be surprised if you never hear from her ever again. Info. Horses can be a pretty big gift. Does your oldest child also get the same treatment as your youngest child? It could be resentment building up and causing her to act out. Okay. 
as an only child, I didn't think of that. But I mean, like, I don't think this should necessarily be the top post, but that's okay. You're the asshole. You bought two horses for your younger daughter and promised the older daughter she wouldn't have been involved in, the, in their care. Italicized, you broke your promises. There were plenty of adequate and appropriate punishments available you could have given your daughter for staying out late and letting her grades slip. Are you deliberately trying to stir up resentment between the two sisters? Because this is how you get resentment between two sisters. Are you, do you want ants? Because this is how we get ants. You broke your promise. Younger sister also benefits from the punishment and may accuse the older sister of stuff to retain these benefits. 15,000 upvotes. Yeah, or she fucking maybe didn't because that's not even in the post in the first place. 15,000 people said, yeah, that insane headcanon, definitely, that sounds right to me. Especially when it seems the straw that broke OP's back it was when he heard she had been needlessly insulting to the younger sister. Seems good old dad here was relatively fine with the other issues, but how dare his horrible eldest be mean to his precious golden baby. Also, I wonder where he heard that from. I'm betting next time little sis gets tired of taking care of her gifts, OP will hear of something bad his eldest did to her once again. The, the, this kid didn't do anything. At least there's like no, I don't even want to say no proof. There's not even the suspicion to begin with, but people are convinced. Seven and a half thousand people are like, you cracked the case wide open, Sherlock. How badly could she have needlessly insulted the younger sister that a reasonable punishment is cleaning up for two horses for a week? Am I the only person that does chores? Most you gotta someone's gotta do it for the entire lifespan of the animal. One week is like it's 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 a flap of a hummingbird's wings. It's gross. I and she didn't buy the horses in the first place. This shit is what how often do I clean up shit? Like literally every day. Sometimes more than once a day if I gotta change my baby's diaper. <laughs> she explicitly didn't want the horses. Don't insult your sister. I'm not saying there aren't better punishments. I'm just saying that this doesn't seem that bad. I don't know. It's fucking... It smells bad. It smells bad and it's gross. Do it for a week. Then don't, then don't be rude to your sister again. Do you have any idea how bad it smells? That's why it's a, it's a punishment. What is it supposed to be like? Oh, it, oh, hey, you have to watch like 30 minutes of Netflix every night? I don't understand what the... It's supposed to be annoying. It's supposed to... The first three days of the punishment are so that you can stew and be like, well, I can't wait to never fucking see my dad ever again. He's such an asshole. And then like sometime around the fourth day, you're like, you know what? I probably shouldn't have been so mean to my sister. And then the last three days are like, okay, I'm, I've learned my lesson and I'm just going to serve my time and not let it happen again. That's, that's why it's a week-long punishment. If you gave her a punishment for 30 minutes, she would just lean heavy into the resentment energy. Minus two, only child take? I, I'm losing it. Like, what, do you, what should he have done? Don't be mean to your sister! Don't be mean to your sister! I told you not to be mean to your sister. Hey, you got to listen to me. Stop being mean to your sister. You got to do so. You got to put some kind of punishment in, in it to make it stick. He shouldn't have given her a punishment that benefited the younger sibling. Motherfucker, these people got shit to do. Get out my fucking, like, Google Calendar. 8 p.m. Let me spend an hour brainstorming the perfect punishment that fulfills, like, 25 different criteria. It's, like, life's too short, man. You give her... You, you, something insane pops up in the top of your head. You go, that's too crazy. 
Then you dial it back a little bit and you go one week in the stables. She's not making her sleep in there. She's got to shovel some poop. You guys are so lucky that I don't have a sibling. Because if I had a sibling, there would be no argument against me right now. The only thing that people are saying against me is, minus two, you're an only child. If I had a sibling, you would have to accept that I'm right. Because the, you're attacking my character instead of my argument. It's called an ad hominem. Plus, it's only two horses. <laughs> I mean, come on. So you're making her clean up shit as a punishment? Yeah, you're the asshole. You've deliberately chosen something you know she will hate. That's just spiteful. It's not spiteful. She has to hate it. It's a punishment. I thought I'm losing my mind here. I'm not saying you should like make her not eat dinner or just give her like those stale crusts of bread and like brackish water or something like that. But that's what you're supposed to... Somebody, if you have to teach a lesson to your child... You have to give them something that they don't like to do. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Punishment is revoking privileges or taking away electronics, maybe even grounding slash loss of allowance, not shoveling shit. Listen, I'm not a 17-year-old girl. I think if you gave me the choice between shoveling shit for 30 minutes a night for a week or taking my phone away... I would shovel the shit, for sure. Maybe that means that taking the phone away is a better punishment. But I, I, I feel like removing her ability to socialize with her peer group is, is like more damaging than, oh, that poop smells a little bad and I got to shovel it into a bucket or something like that. You might be, you know, socially turning her into a pariah. She's going to have to catch up with... I, I, again... I'm not 17 years old, but I imagine the group chats probably have like 5,000 messages in them a night. By the time she gets her phone back, she's going to be reading like a, you know, in search of lost time or something like that. She's going to, she's going to be non-contemporaneous. You're the asshole. Why does your 13-year-old get a break from her responsibilities when the 17-year-old fucks up? Well, the 13-year-old didn't do anything right. It's not perfect. We can all agree that it's not a perfect punishment, but at the same time, why are so many people resentful of the younger sibling that, as far as we know from the facts of the case, was merely the victim of being insulted? I'm the scapegoat. Oh, that's why. I'm the scapegoat child of my family, and I recommend you look at your biases. Well, I recommend you look at your biases because you're inserting your own biases into the post where the, the, the information that you're insinuating is there doesn't exist. The 13-year-old has two horses, and you think the 17-year-old is the princess. Okay, Your Honor, let me write a, a biography, an itemized list of everything I've ever given to both of my kids over the last 17 years, and then you can see if I'm treating one that's uh, with in superior treatment to another. It's driving me crazy, man. Right, I also noticed that. I also share the same bias as you and made something the fuck up without even seeing it. I physically cringed when I read the word princess. Ironically, horses are generally associated with princesses. It almost feels like some sort of projection. It almost feels like some sort of projection. Princesses are not associated with horses. Princesses ride horses, and then there are a, a 10x the amount of royals that work in the stables that are shoveling the shit. You could be a princess and not want to shovel horse shit. The princesses weren't the ones taking care of the horses. They're the ones after the horses are taken care of, they put the brush on their hand and go like this. Pretty baby, pretty baby. It's driving me insane. You're the asshole. She's going to resent her sister more and trust your promises less. You should have kept your word and found an alternative punishment. Why don't you suggest one, Spike 2021, if it's so easy?
you should eat less and exercise more. Any tips to make that happen? Gotta go. Trust is so fragile. If you teach your child that you will go back on your promises intentionally to hurt them, that's a lesson they're going to remember. The point of the punishment is learning a lesson. I think the lesson is, if you're rude to your family when you're still under your family's care, you're going to have to shovel some shit. It's going to be unpleasant. You can be a capital B word when you're on your own, when you're paying your own rent, and then you can suffer the ramifications of nobody wanting to speak to you because they think you're mean. What the parents are trying to do is set up like a, a scaffold where you can make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, and then be like, oh, I didn't like the way that feels. As an adult, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to endeavor to not do that. You're the asshole. You made a promise and you broke it because you have a golden child. I always forget that I'm definitely getting a vasectomy, man. It's not that only children are weird. It's that everybody with a sibling hates their parents and their siblings. They're like, you have to have a second kid so that both of your kids can be as fucked up and resentful as I am. I love everybody, man. Minus two, minus two. It's only making me more confident in my, in my decision here. Your oldest daughter isn't the golden child, obviously, so you want her to be Cinderella. Edited to change Cinderella to Cinderella. <laughs> this shit is so good, dude. It's crazy. Info. Have you asked your 17-year-old why her grades are slipping and she's acting the way she is? Okay, reasonable question. Honestly. Followed by insane reply. My guess is that her parents bought her younger sibling horses that cost thousands of dollars and call her a princess because she wants nothing to do with them. Hey, hey, just wondering why are your grades... You used to be like a, an A student. You're getting C pluses lately. What happened? Oh, I, I've been going through a lot lately. My parents bought my younger sister two horses. Is, do you like it doesn't stand up to, to the smell test it doesn't make any she, grades are probably slipping because she's 17 and she's got her first taste of like independence in a social life and that shit is like more entertaining than school especially when the benefits that you get the rewards for being a good student are like off on the horizon you're like oh don't you, hey you should really study instead of hanging out with your friends you'll probably never see your friends here again after high school but if you do well you get into a good college and then in 15 years you could have a good job which has a great uh, opportunity for a promotion and then you could get retired uh, you know by age 60 or something like that like she's probably grades are probably slipping she's got more immediately exciting things going on in her life is my guess or i don't know maybe she's playing final fantasy 14 She's obviously dealing with something if she's acting out and getting bad grades out of nowhere. She, I mean, she, maybe she... I wouldn't say obviously. Like, she's 17. This is, I, I was a, like a good teenager. There were still times when I was like, you know, 15, 16, 17, where I like, you know, was just mean to my mom for 15 seconds. And then later that night was like, why did I say that? Or like, was the... oh. I don't want to do my biology homework tonight. I'm just going to play ESPN NFL football 2K5 and take the L on this. Like, you know, you just, your, your brain's not fully developed. You make mistakes. Yes, you are TA. This, it's just crazy, man. Why do you think your, her grades are slipping and she's been acting out? You buy your younger daughter two horses. They're not cheap. What did you get your older daughter? edited the ad because this one's really angered me. You called her a princess because she said no to wanting horses when actually that's a very mature decision because it shows she's aware it's a big responsibility and doesn't want to take it. I think you're an ass of a parent. Why? I guess I'm mature because I've never wanted horses either. You got your younger daughter two horses and yet on your older daughter's 16th birthday... You merely got her a Tesla Model 3. <laughs> you piece of shit. 
proceed directly to jail. I had to get like out of that one. Or you're right, I was going to have like a stroke. Like the asshole for misleading my husband for years to make him pay for our daughter's education. Mm. <laughs> Info. <laughs> Sorry. Sounds interesting, at least. I love that half of... And the, listen, the genre of... Am I the asshole post that I don't like? Are like this one. That's like, am I the asshole for uh, square brackets? Deep conspiracy I've been committing against my family for twenty years. The ones I like are like me and my girlfriend were at dinner yesterday, and she said she doesn't like whole wheat bread, and I called her a bitch. Am I the asshole? That's those are the ones that I'm like, I'm I find way more believable than like, uh, you know this. Bryce Dallas Howard, wait, Jessica Shastain, Oscar Isaac's like scene from a marriage stuff. I, 45, have been married to my husband since I was 18. I have a son, 27M, and a daughter, 22F. We are not rich, but we're decently well off. Subtext, we are rich. We always plan for our son to study abroad in a Western country full university since he was a child. And this is expensive due to the high international tuition fees. This went as planned for my son. However, ever since I got a laptop and a phone with internet, I have used it to learn new things on my own from sources like MIT Courseware and YouTube. And I really wanted my daughter to be an educated woman. I also stopped believing in my religion while my husband is devout. I pretend to be religious and follow our customs for the sake of the marriage. I only have a high school level education. The plan for my daughter was to find a boy from a nice family for her to marry and not go to university or go to a local one if she really wanted to. I convinced my husband these days boys from good families want an educated woman for status reasons even if she does not work and that if our daughter had a western degree she could marry into an elite family. It worked and he paid for her to attend a top university which she got into which is actually better than the one my son went to. My daughter, after leaving, also confided to me that she does not believe in our religion anymore and started living a different lifestyle, one that I can never have. She recently graduated, got a work visa, and stayed in the Western country and has a good job there. My husband got really angry when he heard this and is feeling really cheated and blames me as I persuaded him to pay for her education and let her go. He even found a picture of her online in a university competition she did where she won a prize and posed for a picture without her head covering. I'm feeling a little guilty. Am I the asshole? No, I would say that's girl bossing. It's probably not real, but could make for a good movie or something like that. Could make for a, or a, like a 735 minute long Netflix series. I'd be asshole for making my daughters wear dresses when they visit their grandparents. I don't know if I can do another Am I the Asshole post with kids. Especially multiple kids. The people in the comments are losing their, their damn mind, man. I don't even need to read the post. Oh, and the boys merely get to wear slacks and a button-up shirt, but the girls have to wear dresses? You are living in the... Do you misogynist, male chauvinist? It's not 1949 anymore. Anyway, let's give it a chance. <laughs> 